here we're really interested in the theoretical aspects of astrophysics. Really, we want to understand why are galaxies magnetic, why do galaxies show these beautiful large-scale ordered magnetic fields. The galaxies are basically the, um, the places where the stars form, so they are filled with billions and billions of stars and these stars they live for uh, several million years or billion years but the, the massive ones they live fast and die young in a sense they explode very in, in like huge supernova explosions and these explosions they sort of they run through the whole galaxy and they, they stir up the gas that's in the galaxy and we, we do computer simulations of this. But what's all this got to do with magnetic fields? How do we actually know that galaxies are magnetic? This is again related to supernova shocks, where superfast atomic particles known as cosmic rays are accelerated. Cosmic rays are charged particles that become trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. When cosmic rays collide with atoms in the atmosphere, they produce light. One can say that the glow of the northern lights traces out the magnetic field of our own planet. In a similar way, the galactic cosmic rays help us to trace out the magnetic field lines in nearby galaxies. When the particles spiral around the field, they emit what is called synchrotron radiation. The signal is quite weak, so it takes huge radio telescopes to actually receive it. But we can receive it, and that is how we know galaxies have magnetic fields. Galaxies are permeated by clouds of hydrogen gas, called the interstellar plasma. And we know that the magnetic fields are embedded in this interstellar plasma. Research at Nordita focuses on the theoretical aspects of how these fields form. For this, Oliver and his colleagues simulate the plasma on big supercomputers. The systems are so complex, you need to sort of have some simplified framework to understand them, and that's what I'm interested in. And that's, that's um, also the framework that Nordita is really um, one um, place that has the expertise and the, the scientists that work on this. A key role in these computer simulations is played by supernovae, which cause turbulence in the interstellar plasma and which are essential for the formation of the galaxy's magnetic fields. Galaxies are basically huge whirlpools, that's to say they rotate. If you sit inside one of them, like the exploding stars do, you'll feel what is called a Coriolis force. That's the same force that makes a hurricane twist up in the Earth atmosphere. This rotation will wind up the magnetic field lines. That works a bit like the dynamo on your bike, which is why researchers speak of the dynamo theory. If one looks closely at the magnetic field lines in a supernova shock, one can see that on the outside they're wound up into a helical shape. This helix is the key to understanding the dynamo mechanism. But to understand how the many small explosions affect the galaxy as a whole, we need one more piece in the puzzle. Spiral galaxies are flat, disk-like objects. If the supernova explodes a bit above the disk, it will become balloon-shaped. The upper part will expand slightly faster and will produce a stronger dynamo effect. This explains why the magnetic fields created by the individual explosions do not cancel. When both effects are properly accounted for in the simulations, the created magnetic fields agree well with observations. It is challenging. Science does not always, you know, follow a straight line to the result or the answer to your question. It's always a very winding road. It's, uh, um, you, you end up in dead ends more often than you think. And it's, it, is, it is very challenging, but it's also very exciting if you come up with an answer that really gives you an insight that you didn't have before. I think the, the real use of the research we are doing is really uh, tell the story of, of the cosmos, how we came about, and, and I think that's, that, that can be very inspiring to people, so that's enough reward for me to do my research.